Hello everyone, uh, this is Spirit here. I'm in Miami Beach within schoolboy Garrett, the legend himself, middleweight champion. Um, Ian, man, I am so happy to be here with you uh, to ask you these questions. You have a story that is unique in the uh, fighting scene. And it's a story that I believe that everybody should know. Um, first of all, how old were you when you started boxing? I was 12 years old. Yeah? When I started, but I didn't start fighting until I was 13. Okay, well, um, about how long did your boxing career last? 10 to 15 years. 10 to 15 years? Um, how many titles did you get? Just one more. Oh, yeah, and what did that mean to you? Yeah, and what title was that? That was the National Bar Association Continental Champion. All right, well, where did you win that at? In Lakeland, Florida. Okay. All right, um, who motivated you to be a boxer? Well, motivation, I wasn't motivated to be a boxer. I was, I, being, being a friend, I stumbled into the bike game because friend of mine, uh, James Ollins. We stayed across the street from each other. He was at the uh, boys' home, you know what I'm saying? Where we stayed at, but we all, the community, my neighborhood, we all looked out for each other. So he asked me to go to the gym with him one day and uh, keep him company while he started training. So I was like, cool. So he signed up and was being trained. I was <laughs> just in the seat waiting on him. But during that process, I got bored, you know, and started messing with, yeah, messing so, with the bags and stuff. Yeah, so, so the trainer, he came and seen, he seen what I was doing. I guess he was watching me the whole time. And he came over and just grabbed my hands and you know, set my feet right and started showing me like the one, two, three, and you know, send a jab. And then he backed off and said, just do that. But he, and he went back to training James. Okay, and who was this trainer? Who was this trainer? Uh, Jack Leonard. Jack Leonard? Yes, Jack Leonard. All right, um, I see he uh, he made you a champion. Who you? Anybody else of note that he trained? Oh, no, yes, of know? course, of course. Yeah. Andre Berto. Ooh, okay, so, another champion. That was the champion of the only other champion that came out of our gym. As a matter of fact, no. Lady Ram, Laura Ramsey. Okay. She came out a champion. Uh, um, and now, Taz, she just won the WIBA. Okay. So we have a slew of champions coming out that's, that's coming from that era and legacy. So, what area were you in then? Area? Yeah, what, what town, what city? Uh, Winter Haven, Florida. Oh, you was in the Winter Haven. Yeah, okay. Hope County. Hope County, stand up, y'all. Okay. The bone. All right, um, was there anybody in the boxing game that influenced you to be a boxer? Like, did, was there once, somebody you looked up to? Once I got into the to the gym and, and started sparring and I really got into it, that stable that was already there, I picked up from each one of those fighters, you know what I'm saying, and created me. So yes, Amos Coward, Tony Bonds, um, Vince Hogan, um, Quint Smith, Bud Monday, Delfino Marin, Henry Marin, Henry Marin, you know what I'm saying, uh, Willie McGee, uh, James Monroe, you know what I'm saying? We had a, 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 a stable of homegrown guys that just was hungry. You know so I mean? iron was sharpening iron. Iron and that was sharpening shit. iron, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Outside influences that you borrowed your skills from, like, of course, did you, you know, like, uh, Muhammad Ali? Of course, or, that's or, gonna be the top guy, because, you know, uh, my manager and trainer, he, that's who he, his land back in his time, that's who he affiliated himself with. So he, he taught me with my skills a little of the Muhammad Ali stuff, you know what I'm saying? So I did idolize Muhammad Ali. Mike Tyson, you know, he had his era, who didn't, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Sugar Ray, I came up on uh, Duran, you know what I'm saying? A lot of old fighters, even Hearns, Hagler, that era of fighters, is what I learned from. Those were tough, that's a tough era. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's like 
I keep my legacy the way it is, and I won't ruin it now. You know what I'm saying? Came up in a tough time and, and earned my status. Understood. Hey, make sure you guys subscribe because we're going to be going through some of the fights of the fighters that he mentioned and we're going to go through some of the techniques that they use and he's going to break down, you know, why they work, how they work, you know, and on who they'll work on, you know what I mean, and who they will not, you know, because, you know, styles make fights. We know that. Um, as a boxing coach myself, I noticed that a lot of times, um, you said you was boxing for 12 years, right? 12 years? Was your career That was, 12? yeah, my career. But, you know, I've been training, you know, off and on doing that. But. Well, my point is this. Um, I've noticed that people will take up boxing. And boxing is boxing training is not easy. Is it easy? Was it easy? Nah, nah. It's not easy. And I'm sure I see this a lot of times in the gym where I coach. You know, um, it's hard to keep youngsters in that gym. What motivated you to say, you know what, I'm gonna stay in this gym and I'm gonna keep hitting this bag, I'm gonna keep doing these push-ups, I'm gonna keep jumping this rope, and I'm gonna be a champion. What made you do that? Well, I was always, you know what I'm saying, I had my neighborhood family, this and that, but we all have something in us to where we need something else to occupy our mind. And, and you know what I'm saying, that, that attracts us all. And I used to get in trouble, you know what I'm saying, fighting and stuff in the streets. But I don't know, just it was it was to be recognized doing something. It it, was, I don't know, it felt good to me, so I kept coming back and I picked up quick. So okay. you know what I'm I picked up fast. So it's like if I go to you go to the hood, you know, you got some people. You, you, it's it gave me something to do. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it, I don't know if it was positive. I wasn't looking at it like that back in the day, but I just tried my hand and found me something I, I, I fell in love with. You know? Okay. Um, back on the subject of uh, who you were fighting uh, and about fighting, who would you say was your toughest fight? My toughest fight, honestly? I wanted to say for my belt, but no. My, my toughest fight was uh, Harvey Hester. Harvey Hester, where was he out of? He was out of Orlando. Yeah? Yeah, that was my toughest fight. Right what, what made him so tough? He was, he was like a bull, you know what I'm saying? So he was strong? Yeah, he was strong. He had over, almost over 30 something, over 30 fights already. I maybe had less than 10, you know what I'm saying? And, and he, he knew he had an easy win and I was always, I was always the one who had to prove something to him. So, but he caught me with one of the meanest punches I, I mean. What did he catch you with, a left what? No, he caught me with an overhand right. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching some videos on overhand right. Yeah, because I'm a trick fighter, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I do, and, and I, sometimes you overdo your tricks. You, you showboat too much. And a lot of fighters, I did with a lot of fighters. Hold on, say that again. What do you mean? We say you say you overdo tricks. Yeah. You show up too much. I, yes. I show. So we're gonna be going over that in, in the yeah. videos yeah. later on when we break it down film, right? Yeah. We're gonna be going over that. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna find some vicious yeah, knockouts. I was show we're gonna that out. And I leaned yeah. back and <laughs> he just buried in with a right hand and boom, I went down. Boom. And I was on La La Land like I had drunk a whole thing of Mad Dog. But the thing oh. is, I got up. Okay, um, well here's, here's the question, another question that makes your story a little more unique. Um, what took you away from boxing? What took me away from boxing? Being convicted. You were being when convicted, so you, you, you basically did some time. Yeah. How long did you do? I did five years off oh, that bed right there. Okay, you did five years. I um, got out. And you got out and you're here. So I see um, that you, uh, you're making music, yeah. all right, um, it's nice music, you're playing some of that too, um, you're doing shows, um, what is this you got going on called One Last Round, is it One More Round or One oh, Last, yeah. what is that? It's my life story, you know, telling everything that happened to me, all my situations from the beginning of my life, this tra tra tragedy to now, you know what I'm saying, everything I accomplished 
to not have planned. When you say life. tragedy, Failures. do you mean like your your incarceration? No. Is that, no? No, no, I was, no, I was talking about uh, my mother passing on my mother. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a tragedy. But I had a lot to come to overcome. You know? Okay. With the one more round, it is that's dealing with me. Like I said, my pain and what I went through in life, but yet my passion for this legacy and life, I, this boxing. Okay. And, uh, that's what the one more round is. But okay. There's a lot to it than just that. So what do we have to look forward to, you know, from being schoolboy Garrett now? Well, hopefully, um, I have a couple artists that artists, what do you mean? What kind of artists? Music. Music? Like yeah. R&B, rap? They do both. Country? I, I mess with it all of it. You mess with I all of it? I write all of it. <laughs> they, they so you, oh, you write music? I write music too, you know what I'm saying? But okay. back to the beginning. Okay. Charlie, aka Charlie, Charlita Hernandez, you know what I'm saying? Charlie Kane, aka. But she coming out. She's from Brooklyn. Okay. So she, she gas. Brooklyn stand up. Brooklyn, Brooklyn stand up. yeah. Yeah, then I got Primo, uh, Primo. He's okay. out of Polk County. Polk okay. County. So we got uh, uh, this little things going, come around. Rocky Dowdy, he'll be up there. You'll see him in a couple days, a uh, couple weeks, hanging out, doing his thing with uh, you know, New Green, Jesse Howard. You know, okay. Old Dirty. Old Dirty. Where he from? Dirt, old, your boy Old Dirty. Uh, old Dirt Road. Okay. They were Outlaw Nation. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Outlaw Nation. What is what is that? Hip hop group? Nah, that's that's uh, Outlaw Nation is a movement that they're on. Oh, what kind of movement? got going on? Uh, that are Outlaw music. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know what to classify. I don't want to classify their music as something that's okay. not. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Yeah. But I know it's, they got a movement going on in this country that's, that's taking over. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay. Well, everybody, in school, boy Garrett, just so you know, um, Fight Life Scene, yeah, he will be breaking down some boxing techniques, you know, um, so you can better your boxing and hopefully be inspired. Also, you know, you're going to have some music. You know, more arts coming out. And you need a writer. <laughs> you need a writer. Yeah. Ghost writer. All right. Do it all. Do it all. Do it all. All right. Peace.